Welcome back, everybody. Basement chat, H1N1 slash Corona slash let's play some softball. There you go. Basement, basement chat, talking that talk. We are back in the basement, Ripper. Uh, it's good. and it Feels looks good like, to be home, Jimmy. Yes, it does. And it looks home. like we have some uh, viewers joining in now this time. So yeah. our technical staff, uh, once again, doing a fantastic job here, getting us uh, up and running in, in the basement. We want to welcome everybody. It's been a few maybe a month since our last basement chat, and uh, we're glad to be back, River. Jim, let me apologize. Sorry, I was a little late. I was out running around picking up uh, the old personalized Yetis that someone was nice enough to have made for us here. Yes. You guys can get your own going, Yeti.com. We're not getting them for you. We're telling you how we got them. We just know we got them. Absolutely. And, so you know, we got to pick up some uh, extra money. Maybe we'll get uh, Frapples one of these. You know what I mean? Maybe. Uh, oh, man, right there, bro. It's my, yeah. color, it's my color guy in the booth. Absolutely. Um, before we get into the uh, fun stuff, I want to address, I guess we'd call it the uh, the big elephant in the room. Um, we are supportive of those who are struggling in the world with this uh, coronavirus. Our tournament this week, this Saturday at Brick and Lakewood, the Frosty Balls tournament, is still on. Um, we are going to be following some directives from the national office, as well as um, I did speak to both the Brick and Lakewood today, and we'll, we'll be doing our best to comply with those regulations. Rip, if you want to touch on this for a second. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of everybody else seen the same email that I was uh, that I seen. I think it went out to every player where it just kind of says, hey, listen, let's put away the handshakes and high fives and all the inner uh, touching for a little while till we figure out exactly what's going on, but it's okay to go ahead and play the game. Um, and that's kind of the directive we're going to go with, you know what I mean? We do um, think that maybe you should get some hand sanitizer. Yes. Um, this can also help you when your back stink. Um, another prohibitive when your bat stink is picking up a pair of R3 batting gloves that raise your average 50 points. That's part of our lock automatically with the R3s. You can ask Mike Camarco, you can ask Jim Pill, you can ask Jeff Byers. Those guys are R3 supporters. Magnus was before he sold me out this year. I seen him repping some other brands. But that's okay, Mag. You're still my boy. I love the pre-workout, you know, before you get to the gym, just scooping it raw right in the mouth. There you go. I like that touch. Well, listen, grab a pair of R3s. They work so good, Jim. That buyers hit so well, he picked up a couple extra women this year. Yes, I I noticed that actually. Yeah. Uh, My boy right there, you know, buyers with uh, all these fans. You know who, who would have guessed? I mean, he was maybe a, the ginger beard. I don't know. He was a popular guy at indoor. That's all I can tell you. Yeah, right. it's a sweetheart. I love that. Kid. Yeah. So again, this weekend we are on a schedule. I would ask that this weekend, you know, the players come to play, the coaches come to coach, if possible, like to leave the fans home this weekend. Um, they're certainly welcome to come out, but if we can minimize extra people with a ballpark rip, probably a good idea. Yeah, for a lot of people, it would be strange because you can actually be honest to your loved ones and tell them that the side piece is really not coming and mean it. Right. It's uh, something like that. So going back to uh, softball topics here, Ripper, um, we had the Challenge Cup down in uh, Vieira, Florida. You can Ooh. see the yeah. New Jersey uh, Challenge Cup jersey right behind the chair. Jersey that's, uh, that's Ripper. That, that's your jersey, or number three. Yeah, so. that's, you know, the number of winners, I guess you'd say. <laughs> well, uh, it was a great Challenge Cup. I, I, I thank my um, senior director, Stroy Kennison. Did a I, fantastic job. Personally, I'd love to give a uh, personal shout-out to Strojan. Thank you for inviting myself, Bob Frapples, and Rhino to rep down to do live commentary of the major division. We had an absolute blast. I can tell you that. It was awesome to see the inner workings of how it all works during the Major World Series. It was a really good time to see from the production side, if you've never been inside a production booth during a TV sure. show, whatever, how it really works. And the young kids they have down there do an absolute amazing job inside that production booth. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. Ryan, what's Ryan going on, baby? Ryan was watching us. I love but, I mean, it was, it was second to none, the whole entire show put on by Stroh. Stroh, by the way, thanks again for the uh, U-Triple-S-A gear. The winter bomber jacket came in handy. A couple of weeks ago, we ran a tournament up in Flemington. We'll dive into it a little bit later when it was freezing out. That jacket is warm. Yeah, absolutely, Rip. I mean, it was it was a really memorable weekend. I um, we only you know, seen a free agent that day too, Jim. Yeah. but we'll tap on that later. And I'm, I'm going to go a little off, off script here, Rip. Uh, we we, we got the get that? Stuff. Yeah, we got this for you. Are you guys all right? So. Let's see what we got here. Yeah. Oops, hold on. There's a thing there. So, uh, you know, we thank uh, yeah, yeah, Ripper yeah. for uh, supporting our our Challenge Cup. Um, Staff, he did an awesome job on the mic. He's down on the uh, down 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 on the stadium floor there. So there you go. We got a little uh, hottie fun. Center. Look at that. That's myself, that, your state director Jim Pilla, our rest of our basement chat crew, my cousin Dominic Esposito, and our long lost friend Dom Pilla. That's right. Just straighten him out for cool. a few people after tonight. Four handsome looking guys there. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's a good spot for it. That's it. We're gonna put that front and center. Get yeah. your hearts out. 
If you'd like a personalized copy, autographed by anyone of us, we can copy. get them. Yeah, we can do that. We'll charge you whatever uh, Walgreens charges us to make the copies. <laughs> so, on a again, softball centric note, uh, thank you, Rip. A big, big thank you to Mark and uh, MPT Rentals for their support of the New Jersey teams. Uh, Mark, we can't thank you enough for what you did. Um, you know, for, for the teams. Yeah, listen. I mean, there's a lot of players that were uh, from New Jersey. We went down with five teams. And that we're very fortunate on the uh, generosity of Mark Carucci, and they should be very grateful and thankful to him for that. I thought it was uh, above and beyond gesture, to be honest with you. By, by all means. Now, Mark's major team uh, tied for first uh, yeah. with the Kentucky team. Rip, you saw a lot of the major. Tell me your thoughts on uh, the MPT uh, team, shall we say. Listen, I thought, I, I thought a lot of teams were good. I thought all the teams were good. And I was really impressed with the Canada West team coming down, not knowing what they were getting involved in, and actually came away with a win, uh, played very well, and they had some very talented uh, players on their team. But as far as the uh, New Jersey, New York PA faction, there was some very good ball players on there, uh, which I think was spearheaded, well, I know was spearheaded by Flip Washington, who's one of the best hitters, if not uh, the best hitter in the game right now. Absolutely. Um, as far as average on base percentage and just being around, play multiple positions, I've seen him do that numerous times this year already. Another guy that I thought had a very good tournament was Fife. Uh, he kind of came in midseason form. And there were some other guys who contributed as well. Woody Darlin made it right now to start 2020, the catch of the year. Uh, was unbelievable. Me and Fra I believe me and Frapples were doing the game, but Woody went up over the wall to rob a homer, I mean, which we, was a wow, oh, my God, top, uh, Sports Center top ten moment for me for sure. Absolutely. It was unbelievable. We get to see Woody make those kind of plays very often in New Jersey, but he's a, a player yeah. now on the national scene, and, you know, it's, it's exciting to see him, uh, you know, have that kind of success like he did last year. Yeah, we had Mooch being Mooch on the mound. You know, he pulled some tricks out of the bag. He was in midseason form with all his antics and everything from rolling the ball to first base, rolling a couple balls home, going, throwing a couple up 300 feet. Maybe causing a confrontation, not necessary to get into that right now. Overall, the talent of the game was great. Uh, Kentucky's team was very good. Uh, the New Jersey team gave them all they could handle after Kentucky handed New Jersey their head in the winner bracket final. Yep. Um, I don't, I'm glad we didn't go to an if game. It was late. It was cold. Um, There's no need to get any of these guys who got uh, sponsor commitments for the upcoming year in Utah Plus Conference to get any of them hurt. It would have been completely unnecessary, in my opinion. Yep. So, I, I mean, overall, the event was great. The Florida team was loaded. I just. I mean, they just got outplayed is the way it really boils down to it. If I could have seen, though, that game with Canada and Florida, I would have really enjoyed it. I, sure, I, I, I hope my friend Andy Purcell is not watching this baseball I'm going to be honest with you. I'll bet you Andy will tell you the same thing. He was just as shocked as every other individual in the game. Well, I mean, Joe we'll uh, watch it. Joe Kootenay is our, our new USA Canada uh, director. He brought uh, his team down. And, you know, I asked him before, and I said, you know, you guys – Think you're going to be competitive in major? He said, "Oh, I know we're going to be." Yeah, and they were. Yeah, Listen, they were. They got the kid. The pitch from was very. I thought it was very good. Mixed heights, speeds, everything really well. Like I said, I just I think they caught Florida by a little bit surprise, and then before they knew it, the game was over. So it was well done, and the tournament so it, overall I thought was ran exceptionally well. I mean, I know there was a bracket or two that ran late into the night, but we can't help what happens in life. You well, know? I mean, uh, Stryan's a good director. I mean, the other director, maybe not so much. But yeah. uh, he's you a know, gracious host. He's, uh, you know, he, he, he was. He had a good time. Listen, I had a blast too, and I want to thank Jason Magnum for coming in the booth and doing a game for us too, where I was on the field doing the field commentating. Sure. That is one funny cat. If you have an opportunity to listen to Jason Magnum talk for a while, if you don't laugh, there's something wrong with you. So, in the other <laughs> women's, so the women's major was won by the Florida team, uh, Ken Navarreta and the SNI girls. Uh, that should be a team to watch in the in the women's conference this year as as S and I. The men's C, uh, Virginia winning it. Um, the New Jersey team with uh, the last minute addition of Luke Force Ripper, um, really having a nice showing down there. Watch down, our down there, down to his basement chat. Yeah, we'll so um, yeah, Luke Force stepped up. Uh, Mike DeRose came up with some mysterious injury. I think it was from watching his favorite show on TLC, which was. Something about feet, and then there's a couple of sisters that were on my 600 pound <laughs> sister. I think he just felt a little bit obligated to stay at home and keep in tune with that. So Luke filled in and came down and coached and did an admirable job on a team, in my opinion, for the C level. I wish that team was actually a team this year, the C team, because they were loaded with talent top to bottom. I just think that uh, the late game of the night is what kind of caused them to finish where they were. It, it's but that, just one that of those was unfortunate things. Team. Yeah, it's just one of those unfortunate things. But I mean, uh, you know, Augie pitched uh, behind off. You had the usuals, you had Engelman, but you had some new guys down there too. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Matty K and, yeah, and uh, Coach K, Matty Kugison played third base. Um, Mike Backus played left field. Gergens was down there. Chris, uh, Christian Jant played, and everybody else. I know we're going to miss guys, somebody, but they, some Steve San Giuliano, who I think the world of, um, is a guy who uh, has played for Cover Kings, and then uh, he's part of the RSB family as origination. But I think there's a kid there who's uber talented and. I would love to see him get an opportunity at the next level. If he would take it, it would be it would be great for himself and 
the game uh, teams in New Jersey because that boy can play. Sure. And so the the, the men's C team coming in third, a, a very nice showing. Our, our on the New Jersey side, our men's D team struggled a little bit. Uh, they were competitive in the in the pool play games. They just couldn't hold on to it. It just was bad luck all around. Um, you know, I appreciate. It was like a relationship, Jim. Started out a house of fire, and next thing you know, she's sleeping with somebody else. <laughs> Something like that, Ripper. Um, but, you know, our, our men's D team, I appreciate Monty bringing the team down there and what he did. The men's E team, coached by uh, Chris Lorenc, Camarco, and Dom, did a decent show. I think they were fifth. Men's E team was competitive Ripper all weekend. I was very happy with them. Yeah, I know I'm speaking to them guys that didn't finish quite where they thought they'd finish based upon last year's uh, entry. But, I mean, listen, I mean, more it's going to happen. There's more teams. There's more, you know, more people you got to go through and – Probably more talent that was down there than they expected. And, they, I mean, listen, the fifth is nothing to shake your head about. But, you know, it's a nice job. I'd like to see, you know, next year we'll be back, with, you know, hopefully a little bit better in all divisions, and we'll keep rocking and rolling. Sure. I mean, we went in the Challenge Cup from 20-something teams to 75. So, you know, it's going to be tougher all around this year. Jim, I'll be completely honest. If you if you are – and there's some states that have some magnificent ball players that weren't represented, but if you are a guy in your state who has, you know, a, a long phone book, we'll call it, and you can get some guys together at your level, this event is worth getting down to and participating in or getting down to as a spectator simply from the fact that you get to see the state talent versus state talent as, a, as opposed to a lot of teams now. They have a couple of guys from the state and that state all over, you know, and start a trickle-down effect now to the C division more so than anything else. And even in the D, D division, there's guys from different states. Right. But it's nice. it was nice to see teams from their own states, unless you have a real small state, you picked up a boarding state to help you out. But overall, the experience and the game was great. I thought it was fantastic. Even in the, even in the women's division, Jim, it was great. From the major on down, it was very good. We had more participation. You know, we had the, the major field. The women's C was good. I mean, our, some of the girls in our program from Pennsylvania played in, in the C. Uh, I think they they played into the last day. So yeah. it was good. The Indiana teams were strong. They ended up winning the, the entire Challenge Cup. But before I get off track, uh, Rip, we had the New Jersey and the Long Island girls in the finals of the women's D. That was really exciting for us to watch. Yeah, um, not to pick on the Long Island girls, but they got a little bit of ice cream with some sprinkles and two scoops, if anybody was wondering, from the New Jersey girls who uh, – Battled, and I was there for the five, for those games. They played fantastic. They picked each other up. They played the game the right way. And hats off to them. They, they earned it. Yeah, and, um, you know, I, I know that the Long Island girls, the Lock It Up girls, will be out for our women's opener, Ripper, uh, on April 4th. So uh, Nicole Michael entered that team today. We'll have some real good talent here on the 4th. Uh, team oh, Autism is coming. They had, a, they had a couple of girls on the Long Island team down at that Challenge Cup. I'm going to tell you right now that uh, if they're playing, they're good. They're, and they got some real good talent over there. Yeah, and they'll be picking up uh, Nicole and a couple, I think, other girls that couldn't weren't eligible for the Challenge yeah. Cup, but, uh, you know, are, are part of that Lock It Up team. So we'll have Lady MPT on April 4th. Um, we'll have Team Autism. There's a, another new team from, from South Jersey. Uh, I'm hoping we have gems. It, sh it should be a nice kickoff. So if there are women's teams out there from surrounding states, Put the April fourth on your uh, on your calendar, yeah. shall we say? So, speaking rip of, of tournaments that you know we we've had that should be on calendars. We thank you and and the AOB team for hosting the uh, Leap Year Bash. Yeah, weeks ago. Uh, listen, it was a good time. I mean, Saturday was a little bit, uh, I guess we could say cold. Yeah, I didn't really feel like again. Let me read it. I had that U Triple S A. Uh, Winter Parker on thanks Listen, to Strogen. It was amazing. Well, not that. everybody's going to get those special gifts from Strogen. No, I, but let me tell you, that thing is the top money. But the tournament itself, we thank everybody for participating in who did. Um, and those of you who couldn't, I get it. It's a little bit cold for some people, but it was a great tournament overall. There was good competition in all divisions, Jim. Yeah, I mean, if, for anybody who's watching the video who's not clear on what we're talking about, uh, Diamond Nation in Flemington, New Jersey, a, a fantastic facility, um, opened their doors to us two weeks ago. We had in the men's open, we had some awesome competition. Rip, the MPT B team really, really looked good, if you want to tell everybody about that. Yeah, I thought they played exceptionally well, uh, considering, you know, the temperatures and everything else like that. Uh, the team does have a lot of talent, you know, but it's early yet. So we'll see how they how they continue to gel and move forward. But they, uh, if they put it together, they're going to be a special team to watch. It, it, that's, it, that's for sure. And they have two of the, the best, you know, coaching minds in the business, shall we say. No, uh, I'm not doing it. No. No, you and I are out, so they have probably third and fourth maybe with Brian Dockadea. Yes, and, and uh, uh, Froggy. Timmy Roos and Froggy yes. of the Dirt Dog fame out of uh, Connecticut. Two very good guys, um, very knowledgeable guys that know the game real well and should uh, be able to get those young guys to gel and play the game the way it's designed to be played. I'd hate to be sitting around a table and playing spades with those guys. Rip, I wouldn't. Forward. I just I hate, to be the guy, I hate to be the guy who doesn't play the game the right way playing for Doc because I've been there for years. Two things you'll do is play the game the right way and hustle every time. I can yeah, that. and uh, you know, they had some 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 pickups here. Uh, I'm told the center fielder is, is exceptional, and I've heard that from a few other people. He um, stinks. He's probably overrated as far as his player class rating goes. 
Yes. Uh, is it John Don, I think? Yeah, John John. He's got good talent. they got some good ball players. They've got a couple of guys. Tomasco is, is going to be the pitcher for them this year who's been around, um, played with RDD for a number of years. He's coming over to play with the MPT faction this year. Um, but they got some they got some talent from the state. you got Boogie, Kenny Jr., uh, Coach K. There, there's some really good players picked up, too. Uh, yeah. Young guys to play the infield from Long Island who are also very good ball players, so I think they're going to shock a lot of people when they get an opportunity to see them play at this level. Yeah, so MPT's B team, Ripper, coming out. They beat Neil Haglund's uh, Five Tool Training, which is a uh, pickup team. We had uh, Platinum Fire and uh, RDD in, in the Final Four, yeah. two, two awesome teams coming down from New England, so we appreciate the teams coming. Uh, ECSA from Connecticut will be a, a very good C team this year, in my opinion. They did not win any of their four games, but all the games they lost were by one or two runs. So they're just maybe just a tiny little bit ECSA away from playing with those upper teams. I, I wouldn't say that. I mean, you're playing on baseball fields at baseball dimensions, which is something they're not going to incur an awful lot this year. Sure. I mean, I did play against them last year when they were a D team out in New York on a smaller fence. Um, they're a very good team, and if you if you don't come to play against them, congratulations, you just got a loss. Right. That, that was a third place team in the in the D world. So yeah. um, ECSA uh, battling hard. They'll be at the Frosty Balls this week. Uh, Mad Designs will be there also. Those two teams will be. Uh, Knocking it around in the uh, in the open for sure. Now in the D, we had uh, a new team rip. Uh, I'm impressed with these guys, the the Rock Boys team and uh, Deluxe Bakery uh, taking it in, in the D. They took it uh, against the uh, RDD uh, team from Connecticut. The RDD is a D team. Ripper, have you seen right. these guys play at all? I did watch. You did, sorry, you threw me off with taking it in the D. That was a new one. But um, listen, I got to be honest with you, Rock Boys, Deluxe Bakery. They played and they played well. If that's the team they're going to have and they come out and play the way they played that weekend, they're going to be an extremely tough team to play in D all year this year. Um, I, I really have nothing bad to say from what I've seen. And I know Bill Sampolsky, who I've known forever and a day, was out there kind of just making sure that they were doing things the right way. And then they had a couple of guys who had to leave because the D final ran a little late and Bill went out there and uh, pitched for them a little bit. But that's not the reason why they won. Sorry, Bill, I love you. But those boys played exceptionally well all day on both sides of the ball. Congratulations to them and a job well done. That's for yeah. sure. Uh, Ryan Matthews is the, the coach of that team, actually, not not Billy himself. And uh, Ryan really has put a nice team together. The other teams in Final Four in the D, Lindsey Roofing, Bill Riley's team came down. Um, they decided to go back and play D this year. And um, Family First Funding, the P.J. Keel and uh, Josh McConnell team, those, those teams in the Final Four. So those will be uh, four teams, Rip, that we'll hear a lot of in, in the D this year. Um, in the E, we had the E on Sunday. I want to congratulate uh, Rich Velacrez and Diamond Dynasty Rip. That's uh, a big win for them. Yeah, absolutely. Out there. I mean, listen, I believe mostly a league team. I think it's going to dabble in some tournament ball this year. Yes. Uh, they did very well. They beat a team who played tournaments all last year in the Family First, the Old Glory E team, um, who seems at times a little overzealous during the game at the batter's box, um, especially Don Pilla when he got up and sacked right away at something he should know better. But that's neither here nor there. Hats yeah. off to uh, Diamond Dynasty and a job well done, taking advantage of a good situation for themselves. Yeah, I mean, Family First will be a team that'll that'll be back. Um, I want to actually, instead of talking about Family First, compliment the two teams in the semifinals. We had Wrecking Crew from Long Island come over. That's uh, Brian Cabrera's team, and then we had a new team from the Reddington area, which is uh, Danny Millar's team, Green Knoll Grill. Uh, for those of you that follow the E scene this year. I would write those two names down, the Wrecking Crew and Green Knoll Grill. I think those are two teams that have a, a lot of upside. Um, Green Knoll Grill has a few veterans. They have, um, you know, guys that are that are ready to ready to jump into the tournament scene. I think they'll have a very strong year. So, uh, congratulations, to Diamond Dynasty, Rich Velacrez, uh, the guys. I mean, it was really exciting, Ripper, on Sunday to see those guys celebrate. You know, it's yeah, like listen, uh, good for them. reminds me of uh, you know my days playing at, at that level and. You know, I'm excited to see what Rich and those guys can uh, can put up this Listen, year. This kind of gives them a little bit of understanding of what they're playing against all year, too. So hopefully that will only encourage them to play in more events. Again, job well done by them. And I'm looking forward to seeing the two other teams, Wrecking Crew and Green Knoll, as well this year coming up. So sure, should and, be a good competitive year in Evil. Yeah, I mean, the, the, we, we used the pitching screen to Diamond Nation. We appreciate the teams kind of working with us there. They really weren't a big factor. Um, you know, Diamond Nation had those big baseball mounds on the field. So we appreciate the team's so, understanding. The, the part for me with the, with, when you have the baseball mounds out there, it's 30 degrees and guys really haven't been hitting. It's more a safety feature than anything else. We're not trying to get nobody made. We want guys out playing the game and having some fun. So I could tell you there were some balls hit off them screens that would have tore some pitchers up, whether it was at the feet, the chest, or the head. And thankfully the screens were there because there was really nowhere for them to back up right. unless they were backing up the mound. 
So the screens being there uh, helped them more than hindered anybody. Yeah, I mean the pitchers are just defenseless there with the with the mound. So I, you know, we just had to do that. It just no, wasn't wasn't really any other uh, alternative. So. Um, Ripper, moving on in our program, I know we have uh, quite a few people to watch. Baseman chat, they're involved with Conference U Plus A. Should be another strong year uh, across the country for uh, CU Triple A, as we call it. The first three tournaments of the conference schedule are upon us. We have the, the Sin City Major in Vegas last weekend in March, Space City Classic in Houston, April 3rd to 5th, and of course the uh, Hall of Fame Classic Duel in uh, April the 16th to the 19th. Rip. Uh, talk to me about the conference uh, start of the season. What's it, what's it like? You've played up there. I'm, I'm going to assume that the Sin City Major is going to have a lot of the uh, top of the cream of the crop in the tournament because they were, I'm sure those guys are itching to get out. It's going to be a very good show. So sorry, everybody. We're, sorry, we're back here. You can just tag everybody in the comments now. We're back here. Sorry about that technical difficulties. Probably got off. hit by a spam virus, so who knows what's going on here. But anyway, we're back at it. Speaking of the conference events, um, U Triple A conference is as good as it gets as the top level of softball, and expect nothing else out of it. Those first three events are going to be a uh, very crowded field at the top of the field. I think you'll see a usual cast of characters, and a lot of those teams getting out. The duel is the most grueling tournament of the year, um, with back-to-back -back tournaments played on baseball fields. So, I think you're going to be all right with that too. But I just I'm very interested to see a lot of the new form teams. Um, interested to see the Spanish major team to see how they fare. Um, a couple of new faces over at Dan Smith. And I'm sure Brett Helmer's Rosmondo team will always be there in the thick of things because that team is super loaded with talent. Um, I'm very interested to see uh, some of the new teams that have formed at the AA level too as well. Extreme Vikings back, they're not new to anybody, but there's a couple of uh, faces and there's a couple additions to the major level too as well with Rapid Fire going into the major division. That's right. With a roster which has a lot of good hitters on it, pure in the major division again this year with a revamped roster and Justin Booch and Andy Bitsack on the bump for them. So they have two excellent pitchers this year. Um, and a bunch of really good hitters over there, so it'll be interesting. The double A level, I'm very excited to see what MPT has put together to see how it gels in the field. I've seen it down in Myrtle Beach. They're like a bunch of guys that got along real well, so it'll be really interesting to see how it plays out this year for everybody. I mean, the M MPT got to be very close to uh, the allowable points there at double A. I mean, they have a very strong team. Yeah, um, they're under though, but they're going to be under. They're, they're going to be very good. good. They're going to win. You know, listen. Like everybody else, they're going to win their fair share of games, and they'll have a loss here or two that'll make you be a little I mean, puzzled. It's bound to happen to everybody, right? I mean, in in the conference, Canada. anything could happen. Yeah, exactly. Yep. But so they, that duel, they, that duel is the tournament that sets the tone for the year for everybody. It separates who's got how many guys and how good they are. And two tournaments over four yep. days. It's a lot, a lot of softball. I, and we don't, ex heat. we don't expect the same two teams to be in the finals. I'll tell you that. I'm expecting <laughs> different teams. Uh, usually, the teams that go deep into duel one, not so strong in duel two. But it'll uh, be that team that gets. 14 games in on that weekend at some point, I'm yep. sure of it. Scotty O'Neill's watching the broadcast. The that's, that's my man. Scott, there's a coach right there. That man used to that coach. Guy's coach. He can go behind the dish. And now he's he going, yeah, he can do it all. So up, we have some great umpires in the conference. I mean, I, I have the highest regard for, for uh, the conference umpires and the guys that, that have set the tone. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's really always a pleasure to work with some of those uh, some of those umpires. 100%. Now, on the women's side, Ripper, uh, we know we have the, the same conference, U Triple SA program. For any of the ladies' teams out there that are thinking about joining the conference, it's, it's still possible. The first conference tournament will be the Sin City. It'll be a, here in New Jersey. It's raining it's, outside, uh, so we apologize. We were just discussing, Jim, about the women's major where it's going to kick off in Sin City. And then the April 4th and 5th, we got the Queens of the Northwest, which I'm sure we'll have a lot of. Uh, West Coast women's conference teams, followed by the okay, here we go. Smash It Sports Spring Major. Women's Division out in Columbus, Ohio, at the beautiful Lou Berliner Park out in Columbus, 31 Fields. Um, my team will be out there. The Anarchy AOB Lady MPT team will be out there for sure in that event. Um, we're looking forward to it. Listen, the Women's Conference last year was its inaugural season last year, and they're looking to grow it this year, and I'm sure they will. It's a great brand of softball for women that are looking to test their skills at the highest level. This will be it. Um, my team was fortunate enough last year at the graciousness and the gratitude of Don Cooper to participate in the – Women's Conference last year, and it was absolutely worth every uh, bit of it. That's no doubt about that. Yep. So, again, for those of you joining us, uh, we're, we're talking more about the, the Women's Conference U Triple SA now. For those of you who were on the broadcast and bounced off, we apologize. It's a, a cold, nasty, wet night here in New Jersey, and uh, I think the, the Wi-Fi kicked us out one or two times here. So uh, welcome back to, to the broadcast. The uh, Women's Conference U Triple SA, the Smash It Sports Major will be in Columbus, Ohio. We'll also, uh, the Smash It event, Ripper, 
There's twenty six thousand dollars in prize money to be given. Big money, baby, big money. Yeah, um, Smash It Sports uh, doing a great job with that tournament. I, I will be out there helping with the tournament. Um, if teams are interested, you can contact Mark Mancini from Smash It Sports. You can contact Gary Godden, who's a tournament director, or myself. I'll be part of the uh, team, Gary, for, for that uh, that that event. Men's C, men's D, men's E, women's upper and women's lower. So uh, Lou Berliner Park, uh, I'm hoping to see a lot of my friends uh, in the Midwest. Hopefully a lot of the Ohio teams will come on out and uh, play USSA, GSL, maybe even some of the Michigan teams, Ripper. My, my good friend Leo Carnes, congratulations, uh, our new Michigan State director. So hopefully uh, some of the Michigan teams, Indiana teams will come down. Um, once again, that is in April. That's the Smash It Sports USSA Spring World. Ripper's yeah. team will be there. So One thing for sure, there'll be no shortage of teams out in Columbus, I can tell you that. No, maybe uh, Ripper, maybe we'll be able to even announce that game. They're going to have uh, one of the women's major games, women's major teams on Friday night uh, matching up, I think, against one of the men's E-teams. So Against uh, the men's E-team. It's going to be picked at random. The men's E-teams need to get signed up for that. But, um, you know, you got to <laughs> be real careful you gotta, signing up for that, not to, not to sh- slight any men. But I, the team you're going to play – May whoop your, you know what? Yep. So Ripper, we'll see if we can get, uh, you know, selected for. We'll put our hat in the ring there for uh, commentary. We'll talk to uh, the powers that be. So, don't miss if you're a Midwest team or if you're a team that can drive or, or get to Columbus, Ohio somehow. Uh, please uh, sign up for that USSA uh, Spring Worlds. It's a great complex. Uh, contact Mark Mancini from Smash It, Gary Godden, uh, or myself. So shout out to the Columbus to Berlina Park. Has some of the best half and half iced tea at a concession stand you'll ever drink in your life. Near and dear to your heart, right? <laughs> Almost as much as uh, some other things. I didn't really, you know. See, I I, I prefer uh, Pepsi. Yeah. And uh, if anybody needs to vouch for that, you can get in touch with Chris Eisenach Budge, and he'll tell you how good it was. I think the one yeah, over there. We got Trung. We the probably sp- we probably spent about ninety dollars in half and half iced teas. Him and I. I mean, we are a plus size model, but still doesn't deter how good they have. We, we, Steve was there. We got Trunger on the broadcast too. Trung's been to Berlina Park before. Yes, he has. Good man, Trung. Has some great gloves for sale for yeah. those. Who, Listen, uh, if you really need to get in touch with him, we also make custom leather belts in your basement for you too, for your team. That's right. So, uh, Ripper, we, we have the frosty balls this week here in New Ooh. Jersey. Uh, have you looked over at all the uh, C and D uh, pools? Or? I took a gander, Jim, not too deep. I had some things going on before I came here. Like I said, I was out picking yes. up these beautiful, fancy little Yetis that we were nice enough to yes, you did. be gifted. Well, I, mean, I did take a peek at it. And if I was a gambling man, which I've been known to dabble, um, I would definitely be looking at like the Mad Design ECSA as far as the upper goes in the C. Okay. Uh, was the D Division. OOA uh, local team did very well in this tournament last year. I, I'd like to watch that game uh, in the pool play. They're, they're going to be matched up with uh, the Family First uh, E team that was playing up. Um, Rhino Linings is coming up from Delaware. And um, the Pool D looks pretty strong, River. Uh, you got the Mad Designs in there with uh, MDL's military team and the MPT Showtime D team. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see who wins that day. I'm, I'm going to probably lean on – I'm going to go out of the box here. I'll go bad hombres. You know, I was looking at bad hombres as well. Um, they, they have a good team. I, they're definitely a, a team that I, I would not want to match up against if I was playing in this tournament. Um, uh, Eshore Pages could be a surprise team. That's uh, Jay Lang's team out of uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, they did very well uh, what, what he had down the uh, North Jersey D team, shall we say? So I'm going to go with uh, E Shore Pages, Jay Lang's team as a uh, as a dark horse. So that's that's a D. Um, you know the brackets online we may have some changes there tomorrow morning. Uh, in fact, I know we will have some changes in the D, some minor changes. So if you're playing in the D, uh, check tomorrow for an update. Um, Ripper, we also have the E at, at the Frosty Balls. Yes, um, we do. I don't know if you know how many of these teams you know, but uh, looks like got a lot of new names. I don't know if it's new new players or what, but it seems like a lot of new names right there. Yeah, I mean, there, there's some of these teams I, I really don't know about. We've got a Dynasty as well as a Diamond Dynasty. We've got Boom, which is Richie Rydell's team from North Jersey. You know, Rich, he's. Uh, been on the circuit for, for quite a while, and some of the Wasps and some of those North Jersey guys, T-Bone. So I like to see how, how Boom does. And then uh, Scoots Liquor is uh, a team from, from South Jersey Rip. I mean, I, I think they, they have some talented players. Um, anybody you're looking at here in the E? Yeah, I'm going to go with Island Slope Pitch, Walk Off Sports. Okay. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna go as my long shot with uh, Versal Softball Village Pub, Jared Recchio's team. Oh, all right. So, 
Um, yeah, I know we're picking long shots. I'll take the third horse in the fourth race. That's right. All right, so uh, Frosty Balls this weekend. Um, you know, for the men's teams, I, I, I printed out, Rip, uh, on March 28th. We should have one of the biggest tournaments on, on the East Coast. This is the uh, MPT Rentals Sponsorship NIT, which, uh, again, Almost thank you, Ben Mark. Right now, today, right? What's that? Yeah, we have 30 teams. We're close to 30 teams. We have uh, eight diamonds that day, so I'd like to cut it at 32 if I can. But uh, in the open rip, we've got some, some names here that you'd recognize. Yeah, we got the uh, Fishhead Boys, Broken Ore, coming out of uh, Maryland. They'll be up here. Always a very good formal team. MPT's Anarchy uh, B team will be there. Sure. MVP out of Westchester, PA, who's always a very good team. They have a lot of good hitters on that squad. Um, Billy Sampano's Bistro Deluxe Bakery C team will be there. Um, you know, that that's the top of the heap, I guess, it, as you it, would say. Yeah, and there should be some more uh, Cs and coming in. Yeah, and I'll, I'll bet you'll see a D team shock some people, too. Yeah, no, you, 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 you might. Now, in the D, I mean, we've got 16 D teams, something like that already. Uh, there are some teams here that I don't know. There's a, a Smasher team coming down from Rochester. They have Shore Framing, which was the old uh, – they were Kowalski Roofing this year. So that that is the Kowalski Roofing team, which is, is, is the Shore Framing. There's also a Kowalski Roofing in E. That's a different team. Uh, MR2 is always competitive. Very. Always competitive. Uh, you got the Rocks Boys team will be in there. I really don't want to slide anybody. Super studs uh, always. Uh, I was looking to see Josh McConnell's family first team here because I think they're going to be a formidable team, formidable team this year in the D division as well. I think they're going to have a big year, to be honest with you. You know, I'm sure Josh will be blowing up my phone after this because he, he probably has entered. Um, you know, either I'll talk to him or, or really just talk right to the, to the boss. PJ. Uh, PJ or. Don uh, Esposito. Yes, or uh, Mrs. McConnell. So uh, Family First is in. Uh, we just got word from the assistant to the assistant of the assistant that yep. they're in. All right. So, that's just, so that's... I'm going to pick, I think, the finals in the D, if it sets up correctly, will come down between them and Rock Boys. Yep. On how it shakes out. Could be. That's my. It's going to be my pick in the D. And you got some some teams moving up from the E level. You got Pals. You got Kiss. Um, so Pals is, I think, going to be my state champion. I'll pick them now to win the state championship. Okay. That's what we call going out on the limb, Jim. Yes. Okay. I'm going to pick them to win the state championship. I just think it's going to take them a minute to get used to playing at the D level. So this tournament may not be it for them, but I can tell you one thing about Mike and Marco's team that I noticed with them last year. It doesn't matter what they're playing. They're going to come out and play as hard as possibly as they can. So I'm sure they'll get team fixed. They're not going to be an easy team to play. They no. may very well wind up here in the final four or the, or the or in the finals themselves. But I'm just saying, I think first tournament out, got to get it rolling at the D level. A little couple new rules for them to follow along with. Sure. But – um. Don't be shocked if they're there at the end. No, I, I wouldn't be at all. And uh, J&J, Softball, one of the guys from the Mercer area, I think they'll do very well. In the E, I mean, we have some of the teams we mentioned. Um, uh, DK Reloaded coming back to, to play a little U-SSA. Um, you know, we mentioned a few of these other E teams, Kowalski, Family First, Boom, CWR. We actually uh, – we have some E teams I don't think that have entered yet for the 28th. If you're an E-team, you want to play in the 28th, the MPT tournament, there's $1,000 out there to the winner. Gee um, whiz. Uh, E-team's not entered uh, for the MPT. Thank you again to Mark, uh, March 28th. Be there. Uh, I'll tell you, my favorite, my favorite team name in the tournament right now is going to be, is that Scoots Liquor? Uh, Scoots Liquor, yeah. That's yeah. a great name. Um, That's going to be my favorite team name all year. James, as you know, everybody used the year before, it was the Wall Street Bullies this year. Yeah. It just sounds good coming off the tongue. That's right. Scoot Slicker, come on down. Yeah. So uh, the question from uh, James Stedden is, how far is this from York? If I, you mean York, Pennsylvania? I guess it's two hours and a half. Um, and, and for the Pennsylvania folks that are watching the chat, we do have a uh, USA GSL event planned for Pennsylvania. Correct. Um, is that there? Yes, we do. Uh, Jason Langdon is, is going to be directing some events in, in York. Uh, reach out to Jay. They, they have a, a well, there's another one right behind it. Also, uh, Jeff Desain, uh, Joe Pickett, the Harambe's guys, May 16th. They're going to run a couple events, right? Yeah, May 16th and 17th, they're going to be out in Newville. Um, they're running a, a $1,000 cash bash themselves, uh, depending on the number of entries. So oh, that's right. Chase the money, honey. Yes. There'll be a state championship in Pennsylvania. Our former not with us anymore, but there, there have been some uh, directors that have stepped up and asked uh, – Asked to run some events in Pennsylvania. So, I like it. Yeah. Plus, the Harambe's guys are a good bunch of dudes. So. Re reach out to uh, either uh, Joe Piggott from Harambe's 
or um, uh, Jeff Desain, uh, Jeff Desain from the Harambe side, Jay Langdon for the York events. All of them are on uh, the website. You can follow the USSA GSL Pennsylvania page. So I told you Scoots Liquor was a good name, and see my man Bill Sampolsky jump. Chopped right in there. Scoots yes. Liquor, it's going to be some of the Monation guys. Yes. It'll be a real scrappy team. I told you the name was good. I knew it right away, Jim, as soon as I smelled the liquor. Yes. Um, so, you know, hopefully uh, hopefully Bill will be joining us at the, the Frosty Balls this week. Maybe he'll even uh, bring uh, uh, you and I donuts. <laughs> He's going to probably bring out some of those deluxe bakery donuts, which automatically add two pounds per donut to the human body. Yes. Um, those things in weight are roughly two and a half pounds a piece. That's right. But, uh, you know, I had a chance to go to that Deluxe Bakery Beef and Beer. Right. I mean, that was an awesome event. I, so I've really been to it one time, and that's put on a phenomenal gig. That's off. That's a, that's a great job. And also this week, I believe we'll have uh, old Jerky Bones, Joe Slemensky down there grilling and serving those walking tacos that everybody goes crazy about, even though I'm a little partial to the sausage sandwich. Yes. But you can't go wrong when Joel's on the grill. The food's bound to be good, and the entertainment value he has. Is worth it as well. Yeah. So anybody who's interested in food, we should have cooking at, at Brick this weekend. Um, if you're playing in the E tournament, you're starting in Lakewood, but we'll be having the the finals moving over to Brick. Final sixteen. Um, nice. Again, I've got to take a look and redo the the bracket. I had a team drop today, and I have one or two teams coming in. So there will be uh, an updated bracket. So I tomato, I say tomato, something like that. So. Um, we are going to move into the question and answer period. So, Ooh, question um, and answer, my favorite part. We have we have the the computer set up so that we can see your questions. So, if you have a question, you can type it on the screen. If we don't answer the question, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're ignoring you. It's just a matter of what might. It could be. Yeah. Um, it's a matter of what we see popping up on the screen. So, if you want to send the question a second time, feel free to. Uh, it's rip. It, 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 they say it's always uh, the view's always better from the cheap seats. Um, we're doing the best that we can. Uh, doing the best that we can here. So let me go into some of the questions that were sent in uh, in advance. All right, you me? the first one we we obviously scratched out. Fire order. Yes. Uh, the first question is from Brian uh, Beret. Oh, you want to? How's the off-season training? Off-season off off training. It's great, but I haven't picked up a bag yet. I haven't taken the bat bag out of storage. I'm right on bar. Yeah. One thing I can tell you about my uh, broadcast journalist colleague, uh, Mr. Reporty, he's not really a big fan of playing in the cold weather. No, a little, little, uh, little fact. I, I live by the rule, cold 60 and above. Yes. So, uh, Craig, watching the, the broadcast, Craig, I, I see what you said. I appreciate that. What, I, what I'm so glad about is that uh, Craig's daughter, Haley, back uh, playing fast pitch. Uh, Craig's daughter was involved in a, a serious yeah, I accident. I on Facebook, and I think I seen her, not, I think the other day he posted a video of her back at it again, already uh, training for this upcoming season, I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong, Craig, but I'm glad to see that she's recovering. Um, hopefully everybody that was involved is recovering as well, that's for sure. A absolutely, and you, you think Craig and Haley will be part of the uh, co-ed state championship team in about 10 years, Rick? Or uh, I wouldn't I'm going to talk to Craig this Haley after her fast pitch career is over to be part of my organization. I yes. want to yeah, anchor early. Future. One with Ryan Fant's daughter, oh, really? who's an absolute stud fast pitch player. My boy Ryan Fant from PA. Stud at. His daughter is about it. How she old? is a stud. How old is uh, young? I, I want to say Ryland is probably 13 years old. Mistake and punch. Is that right? I know you're watching. I think Ryland's 13, but I can tell you she's a stud, and you're going to hear her name on a national level. I want to just say college softball because I want her toward her bats. She absolutely murders the ball. Yep. All right. So uh, let's see. But the next question here is from Ryan Bereza. What are the bat restrictions for 40 plus this year? I'm always positive you could check out the uh, website to make sure. But when I believe when I looked it up, it's 1.21 in USSA. I don't know about other associations, but in USSA, I'm, po I'm almost positive it's 1.21 um, stamped senior bats this year. Sure. And then there's some information on the website. Vic Rivera running the senior program this year for you, Trip. You can go on you. It's USASeniorSoftball.com. That has some of the uh, bat information and a lot of the dates. I can tell you that we are having a tournament in New Jersey, which is the uh, Bash at the Beach tournament. It's going to be 40s and 50s. I hope you'll be there. It's the fourth time you. I, I, I want to make sure that uh, I'm. I'm. Yeah. You know, at least your hands will be clean when you give me a handy here. Here we go. Let's go. Next question. Next question. Uh, so, Bereza's question, we, we have. So, speaking of the hand sanitizer, Orlando Rodriguez is asking if it's okay to set up a kissing booth 
at drum point this weekend. Uh, I don't know how many girls left in the state of New Jersey has left the guys in that case I would recommend an oral dam. Okay. Um, that is my man. He is a Hall of Fame Tinder guy. Yes. Uh, and there's only two in that group. I'm not one of them. Let me get that clear. Swiping but everyone. Oh, no. It is a Hall of Famer. Yes. Um, you know, now, I mean, we lost Wi Fi twice. And, you know, one of his hot streaks on Tinder. <sighs> Forget about it. Or Bumble or whatever it is. Yeah, he's, I'll tell you right now. Boy, if he ever hit it on the field like he hits it on Tinder, my man would be making about 100 million playing it. Right. Um, or no, I, I don't know what he's saying. I, I can't see that. Um, Jesse, you could send that again if you want. I, I can't see it. It looks like it's a very entertaining question. Orlando, um, kissing booth, uh, feel free. If you have customers, uh, you know, ha have at it. Um, yeah. Um, Cal, will we discuss the new rules? I don't think we're going to discuss them here tonight, but I know they've been posted on the USSA New Jersey page. They've been posted on various pages all over the place on Facebook, which most people are on for four hours a day, according to their data plans. It was uh, a rough Facebook. A lot of them on there. Facebook Some of them we today. talked about. Uh, yeah. It was a rough Facebook rough day, day, today, rough day for you. I had um, my phone blowing up like a Christmas tree, <laughs> like Orlando's phone. I'm <laughs> But I can tell you that some of the rules that are out there, obviously, is the, uh, what a lot of people are talking about is – what part of the plate your uh, rear foot in the batter's box needs to be at before you get called out of the batter's box. That'll be one of them, that's for sure. Um, and the other one that a lot of people are really interested to see if you can stress, and I'm sure it will this year based upon our state meeting that we had, uh, is the making sure that the pitch is the three foot from release, and I'm sure that's going to confuse a lot of people. But if you're unsure, and I've done it before on the show, do it again. Walk around with a bat in the palm of your hand, put a ball at the end cap, and that's three feet from release. So if you lower it down three feet, if you raise it up three feet with a max height of 10. So, and the rest of the rules can be found in the UCCA rule book, which you could probably buy online. Yes. Um, the other rule, uh, for those of you that are watching, um, you know, the, the home runs are up a little bit. The D is three, then an inning ending. The E is one, an inning ending. So we're moving away from the, uh, you know, no home runs in E. The rule that I think we may have more trouble with this year, Rip, in the beginning is, is actually not the pitching. It's the third strike foul ball uh, that you can take. It's live. Yeah, it's live. Live. So tag that, up. That was a conference rule. That's being brought over to the regular USSA book. You can advance on a, on a third strike uh, foul ball. Um, Jess, I don't know about the soft corn porn. Maybe the view's not that good. Like I said, there's some terrible weather. Josh, we are on Verizon. So if we, if we were on one of those government handed out phones that a lot of people are still on, probably be a lot sketchier. Yeah, uh, Josh Palazzi has a uh, – Josh, I'm not allowed to play, but um, it's just that simple. I'm, I'm very involved with the, the world tournaments, and the tournaments that we run here are qualifiers uh, towards the world tournaments. I, I, I can't play. Um, it's just not going to happen. Mark Carucci, welcome to Basement Cap, bud. Thank you again for everything you're doing for us. Uh, he's talking about uh, – Legal cable, I think, through his uh, his parents' uh, block wow. box back in the old days. I he don't know what's black, going on in Lindhurst. He there. said black box. Some other guys got nervous. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Randy Williams wants to know if the coronavirus will cancel any upcoming events. I don't know. We don't know. We have to see where it goes. I mean, right now it's just that I get it's a pandemic. Um, and I'm not going to get into this debate, but I'll say it real quick. I think a lot of it is serious. I think a lot of it is also through fear-mongering. And I'd like to thank everybody for selling their stocks. That's me and another gentleman have uh, heavily cashed down on the deep discounted stocks of Microsoft, yes. Apple, um, Disney, American Airlines, to name a few. You guys want to jump on those if you have a stock portfolio as they have dipped considerably and will rebound rather rapidly once we find out that everything is going to be A-OK -okay in the world. Yeah. So the answer is uh, we're hoping that we won't have to cancel any upcoming events. My official answer on the record is, we will work with the municipalities and the towns that rent us the fields, as well as the guidelines from the national office. Correct. Um, that's just the only answer I can give you. A lot of animated Facebook discussion today. Um, guys, we're doing the best we can do. More people have reached out to us begging us not to cancel this weekend than have asked us to cancel. Any team that has an issue, wants to drop out of this weekend's tournament, get to me by Five, six o'clock tomorrow night, I'd be glad to take you out. Um, and we, listen, we're not mad at no one's points and views. Everybody has an entitlement to their opinion. That's that beautiful First Amendment that we all get to enjoy, which is a reason why we have the Second Amendment, if you follow what I'm saying. Um, but listen, we don't hold no real feelings. You're we're entitled to the dude who had a very opinionated response today. 
is a guy I happen to be a huge fan of as a player and as a human being. So I'm not mad at him. I understand his concern, you know, and I respect his, I respect his position on it. But, you know, as you'll say, the game goes on because everybody around us that we've checked with says it's okay. No high fives or any shenanigans, that's all. Yeah, I mean, in all seriousness, I mean, we, we joke around a little bit about the hand sanitizer and the kissing booth, but, you know, we, we want everybody to be respectful. Would ask that we not bring uh, extra people that that are not playing in the games there this weekend. Um, yeah. Like I said, we're, we're doing the best that we can. Ripper, I, I was going to mention that uh, Davy Boy Smith was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame uh, today. So one of my favorites, the the British Bulldog. I don't know uh, your thoughts on the, the Davy Boy, but uh, congratulations, one, think, of the, one, of the, listen, one of the greatest. I think he rode the coattails of Bret Hart. Well, Dynamite Kid first. I mean, all those I just want to know if Kevin Papix is going to get. I'd like to watch one of Papich's uh, matches, by the way. I'd like to see him get the opportunity he deserves. Yeah, I mean, uh, tag team specialist, whatever you want to call him. But, uh, He's been in some matches I'm playing right now. People in street fights ain't too interested in getting in. Yeah, no, Papich, one of the toughest uh, toughest guys in America. You know, uh, one interesting thing about Davey Boy Smith, Rip, uh, Boy was actually his middle name. Uh, his parents uh, wrote uh, they wrote Boy on the uh, birth certificate like that he was a boy. They put it in the middle name box. That's that's how he got the, the name. That's his actual real name. That's Dave the first. That's the first clue that bad parents. <laughs> All right. So I have a question from three people. All right. Okay. Three. Ask it three different ways then. I'll try. I mean, this I, way I, everybody gets their airtime. I don't want you upset. Well, next thing you know, we'll have a Facebook post about that. One shit. of the people is one of our basement chat uh, staff, so we'll leave him out. But uh, this comes from um, one of our staff, as well as uh, Josh McConnell, as well as Mike Kalinowski. Question is. When will Mike Kalinowski become an umpire in U Triple S A? So I've had this discussion with Cal. I, I think Cal should become an umpire. I think a lot of guys that played at the upper level or high level softball or that have very good experience and very knowledgeable about the game should come back and umpire. Um, more or less, it, it kind of helps the program. A one, two. Um, I think the game would um, really receive some serious value for it when you have better umpires. So it's just my opinion. I think Cal will be a big asset to us in that aspect. Um, some of us that have played at that level, myself, Jesse Campanelli, Justin Mooch, are just some other guys that come back and umpire here and there when time permits it, when the schedule allows us. And I know Jesse's probably going to be a lot more available this year. And speaking to him, he's looking to do a little more umpiring. I myself have a full agenda, um, thanks to five teams and the faction I'm, I'm rolling with this year in the MPT brand. The evil umpire. But the uh, that's what people can call it. I just call it the, you know, I'm very grateful for Mark has done for, you know, the five teams, and it'll be a good outcome coming this year, hopefully for all five teams. But, again, you know, I think it's really valuable that guys came back and kind of, I mean, you are being paid to do it, so I won't say donate your time, but give your expertise to the game and call it right down the middle and uh, kind of show people what it's about a little bit from that perspective. I don't think it could hurt. Cal, uh, listen, you want a shot? Reach out to my esteemed UIC friend. Here, Tom Paterzo. Oh, yeah. A lot of people are very concerned about that, and I think Tom did an absolute fantastic job as an umpire all around. Um, you know, he let guys chirp a little bit, and he gave a little bit back at certain times, which is sometimes what you got to do, but nothing in a malicious way, either direction from the teens or from Turs up and back. I thought Turs, who um, was a longtime player at a very high level and a, <laughs> did a phenomenal job umpiring. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't really say enough about the job Turs did last year. He um, he wanted the big games. He wanted the, the the open games, and we gave it to him. And he, he took the ball and he ran with it like a like a young Barry Sanders almost. So, um, congratulations to Tom, uh, a Hall of Fame this year. We'll, we'll be um, getting ready to announce this year's class in a few weeks. Um, you know, with with uh, we should have another star. Really, a, a big asset. It's uh, it's really been nice to have him uh, back in the in the family, uh, so to speak. Um, let's move on to the next question. The next question is from Kyle Adams. He wants to know, how does Rip feel about Kyle Adams playing with Damo Esposito this year? Again, how does uh, Rip feel about that? I'm a big Kyle Adams fan. Everybody knows my relationship with my own cousin is paramount to nothing. But um, I love Kyle. I'm a Kyle guy. I'm glad to see he's back playing again this year. Um, I'm more excited, though, more about Kyle's Facebook videos of his young son, uh, really grown into himself there as a little fella, and he's making all those little cute noises kids make, and Kyle's got him watching every sporting event now, so he's going to have to 
when a lot of the cancellations go to YouTube videos or some other things. But Kyle's mm-hmm. a man. I love that cat. That's fun. We're not getting the comments scrolling here. I don't know if there's a, if that's even – we should even try to uh, have him hit the new comments button. Is there some, 58, some, 58, some, some more, some more comments? I don't know if you can click comments. the new comments button for us there. Whoa, that blew right. wide open, huh? Yeah, so we got uh, Cal's response. We got uh, Jesse complimenting Turs. Um, Sapolsky talking about Turs on the Masters team. A lot of good stuff there. Yeah, um, listen, that's a big get for Deluxe uh, over over 50 team. We might as well speak about them. We finished second last year at the big uh, the, big, the big national tournament for them out in Vegas. Phoenix too. A- adding a guy who's an absolute assassin at the plate is definitely only going to help and build their cause for this year for what Bill and Sammy got planned for the Deluxe Masters over 50 team, which I'm sure, and I mean, Cal's the guy who plays in that team murders the ball too. So, they, I mean, they got some really good talent over there. Frank Venari. Uh, Billy himself, you know, uh, Brownie's another guy who plays with them. So, they're, I mean, they got some really good talent over there. I, I'm excited to see how they go, uh, go do in year two. We um, we had a question about uh, Team Fire playing C in co-ed. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I hope that Team Fire does come up as planned on April. Here. We've got uh, Josh's team, uh, the GPS or whatever they're called, uh, EGPS, Eshore, Family First. Uh, I fitness, whatever they're called. Um, we should also have assassins back this year with any luck. So we should have some upper team screwballs in mix C. Um, hopefully April 11th at, at drum point, we'll have, uh, we'll see what team fire can do that. I appreciate them coming up from, uh, from Maryland. Next question is from, uh, it's an anonymous gentleman named, uh, initials JB from Manchester, Connecticut. Question is for you, Rip specifically. Why? Do I keep getting muscled out of being on basement chat? <laughs> Never got muscled out of being out. I told you we will definitely have you down this year. I um, really would like to have you down to preview the firecracker when we do that preview for that. Jim will be in touch with you to have you come down. Sure. Um, to give you, to have you come down and give us some background on the tournament and how well it's ran, the popularity of the tournament throughout the years and everything else. So you're not muscled out. Sure. We're just saving you for the right occasion. We need a good crowd pop if you're, you know that me and Jim are. Uh, WWE and wrestling fans, we need a good pop, so we need that audience. We don't want to bring you on too early. It'll spoil the rest of the show. The, the ratings in the New England area would be off the charts, um, you know, with uh, if we could get JB on. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. I bet John Hickey watched that too, good friend of mine. No, like, here's a guy who was a stone cold killer at the plate, that's for sure. John Hickey, another great guy. Oh, they you know, both Brant and Hickey, both players, they can both play it, they can both thump it, uh, both doing a lot for the game up in New England. So, who maybe aren't familiar with the shop talk, JB is uh, John Brandt. He's uh, one of the regional, two regional directors up in New England running the, the Firecracker tournament. I believe it's the 20th anniversary of Firecracker. It's been going on for a long time, and a lot of guys can tell you, you go up there, I've been up there playing men's, and I brought my women team up there the last uh, few years. Absolutely great tournament, supplied bats, so nobody gets to cry the blues about nothing else. It's here's the bats, go hit them. It's a very, very, very good tournament. Yeah, they have a mixed co-ed firecracker and a women's firecracker, which, Rip, uh, I believe your team has, has come out on top at least once. Yes. Um, you know, never an easy, ever easy over uh, Twisted Sisters and some of the other uh, so what, the top teams over in New England. Great group of girls, both teams up there. If, if you are a ladies team in the, in the Northeast, you, you should sign up for this tournament immediately. I, I know JB uh, is, is in all seriousness taking 20 teams. I think there's 14 already signed up. So if you're a female team, Want to be part of the firecracker? Sign up. Um, I know Ellery's Young Guns on the men's side. I spoke to Billy Lester this week. The first thing I said to him was, "Billy, get your team registered for the firecracker right away before it fills up." So yeah, if, you, if you're not in there by the end of the March, you're probably not getting it. Yeah, I mean, please. I mean, KB can only take so many teams. So uh, firecracker should be another big tournament. Uh, put it on your schedule. We talked about the Spring Worlds. Lots of good things you can do within driving distance. Um, you know, here, the MBT sponsorship tournament in, in New Jersey. And there's a couple other ones we've run down here, the uh, Smash at High Low and a few others that are always big-time tournaments, too, as well. Yep. Shame. So, Shame. I know that I've seen a question before Josh McConnell popped up. He's probably wondering if we're ignoring him. He wants to know no. who had some of the best pickups and Ds this year. Okay. Josh, I'm not going to answer that. I'm obviously family first, Eddie Augie as a pitcher, even though yourself did a great job last year at D-Worlds, um, is a big coup for family first. And uh, adding fully meant to the right fielders only going to help you too. But I'm going to be I'm going to start diving through the rosters here moving forward, see what players and moves where. Um, it'd be very interesting to see what happens. Some teams don't have their full roster up online yet. I mean, I know OOA um, put their their roster up just yesterday. So I'd like to to rip do another basement chat maybe next month, or we go a little bit deeper 
on the men's D and men's E teams. I, I know that we'll be doing something um, right around that MPT uh, sponsorship tournament, yeah, either right before right. or right after. So, um, well, I'm not in Rikers Island. We'll be here. Uh, yeah, anything could happen. Uh, Shane Alvarez asked favorites for E, D, and C this year to make a run at the Worlds with the current rosters. And we talked a little about E. We talked a lot about D. But C, uh, I'm not sure. Rip, any thoughts on the teams at the C level? Make a run at the Worlds with current rosters. Well, the Ellery's Young Guns team is coming back this year, right? That would be one so, of them, yep. So you'd have to assume based upon their finish this year, last year, which was just outside the top ten or just inside the top ten. Yeah, they were, they'll be back in that same position. I would think so. Bill Sampolsky's, I'm sure, retuned his roster a little bit, and they'll be very formidable foes this year. And I'm not sure who else is actually playing at the sea level that's level to us. I don't think ECSA is going to have uh, – much issue competing at the sea level uh, based upon the roster that they're going to have either. So uh, it'll be an interesting year. Like I said, when we really get an opportunity to dive into the rosters, once everybody gets everything submitted and the moves are done, uh, I'll be able to have a little more insight to really give you my personal thing. And if it, if it warrants it, or if you don't give a shit, I may give it anyway. That's right. Um, so again, we're down. I, I, I don't think we have too many other questions. Joel Stemetsky uh, asking, can there be a tournament uh, statewide that, uh, honors the, the, the grill master himself, Joel Stomatsky. Yeah, every tournament that's between our brand and the other brand, he gets the grill at. Yes. Every tournament it's is funny. your tournament, bud. Yeah. What are you talking about? Uh, Joel, we're going to table that, and we'll get back to you, but we appreciate from the – right from here, right right from the heart, we, we appreciate, uh, you know, coming out and, and feeding everybody. <laughs> Depends on the, the price party. I get for my company barbecue, and I have it back this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, absolutely. I mean, I know, I know Craig Martins thinks I, I've slimmed down a little bit, but you eat one of those walking tacos in the field that Joel made. You want to have two, you want to have three. So um, There was a big hit at the company picnic for Rip. I played that much. Yeah, I mean, we tried a little Red Robin uh, tonight, guys, here at Basement Chat, but unfortunately uh, the, the staff just – it was just not the buy-in. So we're going to have to go back to uh, the regular uh, pizza and Italian specialties. So – um, other questions here. Mark Carucci, when will New Jersey stop watering down the teams and go to Florida with stronger teams? New Jersey can do better. Too many players spread out, in my opinion. Mark, I, I'm going to let Rip answer that. I, I I think we've done well. We've sent teams down there that have, that have been competitive in the top. I mean, only one team can win. It's a, it's a 120-team tournament. Um, you know, Mark, you've tried to raise the bar here in New Jersey and – you know, and anything that you've had your, your contact with. Lady MPT was third last year. Um, you know, I know that Josh McConnell's team went down and, uh, you know, won the, the mix C last year, which was very impressive. So, Ripper, any, any thoughts on Mark's uh, comment there? I, I think it's maybe not so much at the D and E level, in my opinion, just because a lot of guys like to still play with their friends at that level. But at the C level, we could actually put together a team that was very eerily similar, as I said earlier in the broadcast, to the Challenge Cup team. I thought that if that team had stayed together this year, that they would be extremely special. Um, that would be a team I would like to see really play a full year tournament uh, ball and go down the world to see how they fare because that team, one through 13, was loaded with talent. Yep, and, you know, we have a lot of guys that are that are just not looking to play and challenge themselves to the highest levels. I mean, I, I, well, I, I've i gotten f flooded with, with, with appeal requests as a state director. Mm -hmm. If anybody who is out there that still needs to uh, – wants to put a player appeal in, fucking hate this topic you need to put it in soon okay it's such a worn out topic i know but i want people to understand that when they call me in april that we can't put player appeals yeah. in so I, I apologize and if you did they'd be mad and if they win they're mad and no matter they lose they're mad no matter what i do they're mad and but, when they find out their girls banging the seed player they're mad <laughs> and they're trying to hit on the co-ed girls and they're trying to hit balls at co-ed girls and they're still mad it's and a they're angry. vicious cycle and they run on facebook because their keyboard ass stuff mad I really seriously, I would love to see you trip revamp the entire appeal process as follows. You play E, you're allowed to play E for two years. You never can play an E again. You play D, D, you're allowed to play D for four years. You can never play D again. Then you get to C and move shit up and move it around because it is absolutely blasphemy that guys that play D and E or have played D are trying to peel down to play what is supposed to be entry level softball. To stay E because they're more interested in running around. As Keith McCormick posted today, four dollars in the bank, a ten credit, a ten credit, a credit score. Excuse me, this aggravates me. And nothing going out of life, but life's great because I hit seven eighty six with three homers this weekend at the ballpark. People's priorities are so backwards. 
when it comes to some of this stuff. It drives me nuts, and I know, I'm, listen, I'm a big part of the program, but it's one of the things that drives me crazy. Uh, it just absolutely drives me nuts. It does. I'm going to stay off this topic. Uh, as a director, I don't want to be involved in it. All I can tell you is if you have an appeal, please send it in. You need the form completed. Email it to me if you're New Jersey or, or one of the states that I'm helping with, um, and I'll, I'll get it put over. Rip, you got a lot of likes there on your rant. So it's funny. I don't, I don't listen. I don't mean listen. There's guys that play E that probably maybe like shouldn't really advance in E, and I get it. But there's some dudes that are playing E that are legitimately could play D plus softball or C softball on a competitive C team, and they're hanging out in E because they want to run around town at the local league. Another thing I'm sick of is seeing all these league championships posting one shit at a tournament, but every time you turn around on Facebook, there's another, look, another league championship. We're great. No, you're not. It's league softball. Chances are you're beating up Jim, the accountant, who doesn't play tournament softball. Never has. That's who you're beating in league. Congratulations. You took a bunch of tournament players and went and shit on a bunch of accountants. Awesome work. Congratulations. Made sure, made sure he took the picture, too. Got it uploaded right away. You know, I, I listen, I like playing league ball, Ripper, uh, but, you know, I feel, right, I'm yeah. a league, I feel I'm a league player. Jim, you know, not the accountant, but Jim, the director. So that's yeah. my point. Guys put it together, tournament team, and they go beat you and your friends up by 40. Awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, I got to fig- figure out a way to, to get back on top in a few of these leagues. But, and then the uh, same group of guys, here's the part that really gets me, the same group of guys when you triple a who spends thousands of dollars to live stream major events and says, hey, guys, we need a little help offsetting the cost. It's going to be $5 a month. Oh, my God. $5 to watch you triple a Softball, that's a criminal thing. It's a criminal thing. No, it's criminal is that you enter 55 bat raffles at $50 a piece, and you won't spend $5 to watch somebody putting on a thousands and thousands of dollars of consumption. That's criminal. No argument there. I, I, I did not put Rip up to said uh, commentary, but no, I, I said I, it. I meant it. I, pr- I appreciate it. I don't it. care. One less beer. You One less see, pack of cigarettes. You can see. One less me. hamburger. <laughs> you can see from my reaction that uh, that was not part of our uh, planned uh, skit. Do we have any other questions from the audience? We have uh, come close. To show. To you have the class organization in all of softball puts on the best show possible, and people complain about it. I again, sorry, go ahead. I, I, I appreciate what what you're saying. I do not have any more written down. Same questions. guys that probably don't thank the sponsors that spend thousands on them either. Yeah, wonder why uh, the game. Why the- can't say it enough. Thank the sponsors. I mean, I, I, if, if I was on a team with a sponsor, I, I, I walk up to the sponsor after every tournament and thank them. should be the first person you thank before you kiss the hoochie. You're banging on the side. <laughs> Something like that. Um, so, I, I, again, Rip, you got more more likes on that, I think, than um, we've gotten in the entire history of Basement Chat. Kyle, I noticed that you're uh, hulking up, and um, Kyle wants just, you to pile drive me <laughs> right to the table. Uh, yeah. Thanks for breaking up the bottom. But just – this is the most silliest. I mean, if you're ever on Facebook and softball people are the greatest, and I wish Mooch was sitting next to me now because he would go on probably another 35 minute rant about BP videos and all this other shit. When a guy's got 94 different bats, I wonder why he's sitting 510. I don't know, maybe pick the same model, five of the same model, get used to swinging those and maybe increase your average. Pick up a pair of R3s. You're already at 0.50 before you even touch a bat. We, um, we'll have to see if we get Mooch back on for another, uh, another guest spot. Um, we are just about coming to the end oh, of God, the I feel like Magnus when he takes that pre-workout. I love it. Um, I, I think we're getting close to the end. This is the last call for questions. Anybody else have anything for Ripper or myself? Or I love you all, but, man, you drive me crazy sometimes. Or even our uh, two uh, basement chat uh, staffers, if anybody has questions for them. Uh, I guess not. So what do we got? <laughs> so, uh, no, I don't think I have the balls to do that. But you know, we did. You know, we did come very prepared here for um, you know the the, the elements uh, between the you know between the hand sanitizer. Uh, we got the the Pepsi here. We got, I got, what else would I need? You know what I mean? I got everything. So um, for for the e tournament, is it a thousand dollars to the winner? The MPT tournament is a thousand dollars to the e winner. And a thousand dollars to the D winner. That's the one on March twenty eighth. The reason we're able to do that is the generosity of MPT and Mark Carucci. This week, uh, to answer your question, yes, there'll be a payoff for first and a payoff for second. I'll be uh, redoing the schedule in the morning. I have at least one team that is dropping out for reasons I don't want to get into right now, and I have at least two teams in the D that are coming in, one to replace that team, and another team uh, coming in. So. Bracket will be redone. Most teams have the same start time and feel. Um, 
What else? Uh, a couple of guys ch- chiming in about whether or not who's the best D team. We haven't really sat down and went through all the rosters yet. There's teams that haven't registered yet, and once the rest of the teams go through, we will kind of give you our opinion for what it's worth and who we think. We've been pretty accurate the last few years sure. on who's been the cream of the crop, so to speak. And there's always that one or two surprise team that sometime during basement chat during the year that Jim and I spent a lot of time talk, talking about, too. So, yes. Um, Heather, I, I am available for rentals, whether it's company, motivational speaking, or whatever else you may need. Yes. And it's a reasonable fee. It's like three Arnold Palmers and a bag of chocolate chips. It's simple. Maybe some Coke. Yeah, so, something like that. Um, Ripper, I think we've come to just about the end of the line here for the night. Uh, first of all, we appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, we hope to see a lot of you at the uh, Frosty Balls, at the MPT Sponsorship Tournament. Ripper, if you want to take us home with some final thoughts, I'm sure everybody would uh, love to hear you close this out. No, listen, I, I wish everybody this year, upcoming year 2020, a lot of health, a lot of success and happiness. Um, I'm sorry. I apologize for the rent. No, I don't. I'm lying to you. I don't apologize for anything I ever said in my life. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for joining we'll us. We'll see you, see you soon. Appreciate awesome. it. Nice night.